logical fallacy, literally, thinks he is so smart by clearing out old only source at only level four. But if you watch his video, you'll notice that he literally dies a bunch of times, which shows that he is literally a terrible Fallout player, unlike me, because I have literally completed Fallout 3 without dying in my YOLO series. So I decided I'm going to show Logical Fallacy how it's done by completing the same challenge he did, except I'm going to literally do it YOLO style without dying even a single time, because I am literally the greatest Fallout YouTuber thanks to my jump cut editing abilities. Literally, the first order of business is that we literally create our literal character. I think this was literally how Logical Fallacy did it. Uh, I mean, I'm literally doing this my own way and not literally copying him at all. Any similarities you say between my video and his are literally just a literal coincidence and nothing more. Conveniently, there's this huge crater which was obviously caused by this rubber tire hitting the ground with such a force that it blasted all the way down to groundwater, just like the bomb did in Megaton. I can drink this cool refreshing groundwater and hail up my HP which was damaged in the vault when Amata literally sat on me and nearly crushed me to death beneath her American arse. And right off the bat, I hit my first level up because in Fallout 3, everyone is a winner. And that is why Fallout 3 is better than New Vegas. In Fallout 3, you get a perk at every level, which is better than every other level because it makes your character even more overpowered. Yeah, I'm going to go with intense training because that is never a bad choice. That said, Lady Killer might not have been a terrible choice because of reasons which will become apparent momentarily. And another reason why Fallout 3 is better than New Vegas is because there are loot containers all over the place, even their inhabited places like Megaton. And in the course of 200 years, no one has bothered to loot these containers. Even the hobos that beg for water outside of the towns. They could be making lots of caps and could easily buy their own water, but instead they are kind enough to leave the loot for the player to find. And that's why Fallout 3 is the greatest game ever made. Because everyone is so nice in this game, and they leave loot untouched for 200 years, so the player can grab it. These hobos are literally dying of thirst, just so the player can grab the loot that they easily could have grabbed themselves. The hobos in New Vegas are a bunch of murderous thugs that try to rob the player the first chance they get. That's why New Vegas sucks, because New Vegas hobos aren't as friendly as Fallout 3 hobos. I happen to live in Great Britain, and one of the great things about Great Britain is that there are no guns. That means I can walk into someone's home and take their stuff and they can't do anything about it. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? Uh, hello. Colin Moriarty, the owner of Moriarty Saloon in Megaton. That sack of shit is convinced that I'm some crazy junkie who stole money You have some money, eh? Well, why don't you hand it on over to me, because I could use it to buy some supplies to go yeah, to Old Olney. Oh shit! Oh my god, she's got a gun! You bloody yanks and your second amendment! Why don't you let me rob you in peace? Was this what H. Bomber guy meant when he talked about violent American supremacy or whatever? Haha! <laughs> I got your gun! You Americans aren't nothing without your firearms. Oh shit, she's got a knife! She's got a knife! Ah! Bring it! Bring it? 
Okay, Dobia, I'll bring it. Consider it brought. That's what happens when you mess with many a true jump cut. Logical fallacy struggled, but as you can see, I brought her down in just a single punch because I am a superior fallout player. And now I can loot this house in peace. Ooh, looks like I found Megaton's food source. People say Fallout 3 doesn't make any sense because no one is growing any crops, but why do they need to grow crops when there is a pre-war refrigerator right here in Springvale? Mmm-mm, pre-war junk food, noodles, and iguana on a stick from 200 years ago. Them's mighty good eating. Speaking of my good eating, how we say some megaton citizens out hunting a giant ant for its succulent mate. The huntress even says there's more where that came from, because she knows there's plenty of ants to haunt in this vicinity. But this one piece of ant meat isn't going to be enough for my old only YOLO challenge, so to get myself better prepared, or head on up to Moira Brown and literally sell off much of the loot I stole from Silver. Moira literally gives me an armored vault suit which literally belonged to some girl from the vault. This armored vault suit will be very handy indeed for the challenge that lies ahead. I do not plan to get involved in any more questing than I have to, because I have to keep my XP low so I don't level up too much before I arrive at Old Oni. That being said, I will do one part of Moira's Wasteland Survival Guide quest by heading up to the Super Duper Mart, which common sense would clearly tell you would be a great place to gather up food and supplies 200 years after an apocalypse. Before I literally leave Megaton, I am going to literally grab a literal Chinese assault rifle from Lucas Sims. The easiest way to do this is by allowing Mr. Bark to literally kill him. Logical fallacy literally showed how to do this in his video, but I am literally going to do it even better, because I am literally a better Fallout YouTuber, and I'm not going to piss off the entire town and get killed the way that logical fallacy literally did. Since Bark literally does the killing of Lucas Sims, there is literally no karma lost by literally allowing him to do this. And that is how you can literally get a literal Chinese assault rifle right at the start of the game. Literally, without any effort. And don't forget to grab the key to Locust Sims' house. There you will find the strength bubble head, which literally increases your literal carrying capacity. After a short, rather uneventful journey, I am now at the Super Duper Mart. In a post-apocalyptic world, what better place to stock up on groceries than a 200-year-old supermarket? If there is one thing I will criticise Bethesda about Fallout 3, it's that this Super Duper Mart doesn't quite feel like an authentic American supermarket because where are the electric carts that morbidly obese shoppers ride around in? This is the United States after all, the land of the Big Mac and the home of the diabetes. But aside from that inaccuracy, Fallout 3 is literally better than you think. And you know what else is better than you think? This broken laser pistol. H. Bomber guy complained about it, but it's just because he literally sucks at the game and is not an elite YOLO player like me.
Now it's time to put the laser pistol to the test and go pew pew. Oh flip, I missed. Well that's just because I wasn't using vats. Fallout 3 is literally better than you think because in order to land any hits you have to use vats. And that's a good thing that the game has clunky gunplay because you are a key from a vault and you are not supposed to buy anything more than that. So it's great that the game literally railroads you in this way. Oh, flipping bloody flip! Oh God, help! Oh yes. That'll teach you to mess with many a true jump court, you yank bastard. And that's your lot. There's a new sheriff in town and his name is many a true jump court. Oh, looks like there's literally some more yank wankers up ahead. Oh no, I'm already literally in caution. Oh dear, the flipping bullets literally did nothing. Oh flip. Oh yes. Pay no attention to that jump court behind the curtain. I am the great, all-powerful jump court. Come back here, you cowardly wanker. And that's your lot. And now we get a well-deserved level up. I'm going to put some points into science because there's a terminal to hack momentarily and also bump up small guns and the remainder into energy weapons. And for our perk, can't go wrong with another rank of intense training these lazy Americans are all flabby and weak, and I will defeat them with more superior British physique. As you can see, there is a lot of ammo and weapons, so come here was more than just mere grocery shopping. Here is the pharmacy key. There's a few bottle cap mines, which will come in quite handy indeed against the death clause in Old Olney. Here is a computer terminal which can activate a protectron. Nailed it in one try, which makes me superior to logical fallacy. And it's a good thing we activated the protectron. Because it seems like more Yank wankers have arrived into the supermarket to feed their obese American faces with greasy Big Mac hamburgers, because that is literally the American way. I'm gonna kick your ass. I don't think so, lass. Ha ha ha! I got your gun! Take that, you bloody wanker! Hello there, my good man. It just works. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass on your disgusting bottled yank bear. Bear is best served the British way. Warm as piss and toasting like it too. Oh look, there's a straggler. And that is literally your lot. The next order of business is to head on down to Tenpenny Tower in order to get the Dark Gun schematic from Lydia Montenegro. Tenpenny Tower is owned by a fellow countryman of mine, a British man by the name of Alistair Tenpenny. Many people think Alistair Tenpenny is a bad guy, but the truth is he just wants to make the capital wasteland great again probably by making it a colony of the British Empire as it was and as it should be. Tenpenny wants to nuke Megaton and that's a good thing because it reminds me of the War of 1812 when my fellow British countrymen burned Washington DC to the ground. And that's your lot. Uh. 
And that's your lot. Oh, flippin' bloody flip! It's a stampede and herd of mole rats! Oh, I better get out the old 10mm SMG! Help me! Well, that was close. Whew! Oh dear, it is literally a mother flippin' Yaogwai! Well, I happen to have just the thing for you. Yes, indeed. This is a hunting rifle I stole from Lucas Sims. Take that, you bloody flippin' wanker! All of these flies buzzing around are proof that the capital wasteland is a shithole country. That is what Alistair Tenpenny is right for wanting to nuke it and making it part of the British Empire again. And that's your lot. And that's your lot. Oh, you're dying of this, die? Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you dumped all the tea into Boston Harbor. You should have paid your crown tax like a good colonial subject of the British Empire, you ungrateful yank bastard. You are lucky I don't shout you where you stand. Fortunately for you, you are literally not worth the bullet it would take to put you down. This fine gentleman, on the other hand, is worth quite a few capes if I could kill him and his murderous band of yank wankers. The easiest way is to shove a hand grenade up his bum, but unfortunately, he noticed me prying his arse cheeks apart, so now I have no choice but to jump cut my way to an instant victory. That is literally what you get for dumping tea in Boston Harbor. You bloody yank wanker. And now I make my way to the headquarters of the Continental American Army to literally put an end to this insurrection against British rule. This goal must literally be Paul Revere. I have to put him down before he literally alerts the other Yank ghouls that the Redcoats are literally coming. This skeleton has literally been lying here for the last 200 years and still has an assault rifle and several magazines of ammo. This despite the fact that Roy Phillips and his gang have been occupying this station. Roy and company could have taken it, but they were kind enough to leave it here for the player. And this is another example of why Fallout 3 is better than you think. And that's your lot. And that's your lot. I've literally found the literal Yankee rebel base. This ghoul is literally instantly hostile on sight, which proves that he is literally a terrorist. His name is Michael Masters, but he is literally a master of nothing. And that's your lot. And now I'm going to literally sneak up on Bessie and put an end to the Yankee Ghoul Rebellion once and for all. Yes indeed, nothing makes me feel like a big man more than murdering an innocent woman in her sleep. <coughs> Oh.
and murdering an innocent woman in her sleep literally gave me the XP I needed to literally hit level 4. This should literally be the final level before I make it to Old Oni for the YOLO challenge. And I will literally put some points into unarmed explosives and energy weapons. And for my perk, literally going to go with intense training yet again because that is literally never a bad choice. I don't recall losing any karma from literally killing Roy, Michael or Bessie, but when I literally take their stuff, the game informs me that I am literally losing karma for stealing. This is literally yet another example of why Fallout 3 is literally better than you think, because Fallout 3 is a game that respects the property of dead people and tells players in no uncertain terms that it is wrong to take the belongings of dead people. Even though it is perfectly fine to murder these people in the first place, this is the sort of game design that just works. And now to literally head back to Tenpenny Tower for a well-deserved reward of literally 500 caps. Which I will literally, immediately, spend on the dart gun schematic at Lydia Montenegro's shop. I then head back to Moira Brown's shop in Megaton to literally craft a dart gun Using the schematics I just literally purchased, I have all of the components save for one, a rad scorpion gland. I have not yet encountered even a single rad scorpion in this entire playthrough. So my goal now is to wander aimlessly through the wastes in the hope that one will spawn in somewhere at random. And eventually, I happen to literally find a literal red scorpion, as well as a random wastelander and a super mutant. I don't care about either of those, only the red scorpion. So I pummel the red scorpion to death, retrieve the poison gland, and then make a beeline back to the workbench at Maura Brown's shop. Now, finally, at long last, I now have a dart gun, and now with the dart gun in hand, I make my way towards Old Orney. Oh no, there's a death claw. Well, all I have to do is copy the technique that was done by logical fallacy. First I dart the death claw, then I jump cut it to oblivion. And that's your lot. And now to get into Old Only proper. You say, there's a little trick I learned from watching Logical Fallacies video where if you run up this rubble here, you can jump and fly over the wall like Mary Poppins. But Logical Fallacy is an idiot and kept getting killed over and over. But as you can see, I got past all that on the first try because I am the great, all-powerful, many a true jump cut. This grating here is literally a trap door, which if we stand on it, literally takes us down into the literal sewers, which is precisely where we literally need to go. Hello. I have just the flipping bloody thing for you. Yes, indeed, here is a dart for your reptilian arse. And now, a bottle cap mine here should do the trick. Maybe another one here. Oh, flip! I guess I should have brought along more bottle cap mines. Oh, dear! Remember the broken laser pistol I picked up at the Super Duper Mart? Well, now it's time for you to shine. Show each bomber guy that you are as useless as he says you are. Because despite what he says, Fallout 3 is literally better than you think. Oh yes! Flippin' bloody logical fallacy literally died a bunch of times to this first death claw, but look how quickly and easily I got it to sod the bloody flip off. 
Inside of this room, there is literally a maintenance terminal, which can literally be used to literally activate a protectron, which can literally help against the death clause, but that would literally be cheating, and also hacking terminals is literally something that nerds do, and I am not a true nerd, I am a true jump cut. Oh look, it is literally the skeleton of Logic and Fantasy. He is a terrible Fallout player, and that is why he died. So far I have literally not died even a single time. Only like Logic and Fantasy, who literally died a lot of times to that first death claw. Now it's literally time to literally move forward to the next literal death claw. I'm literally going to prepare myself for battle by taking some Psycho to literally increase my damage output. This is literally very important because I am literally playing on very hard difficulty. I am literally also going to place some literal frag mines right here so the Death Claw can be blasted to smithereens just like Guy Fox literally tried to do to the British Parliament. Oh dear. The explosion didn't do as well as I had hoped. Time to switch to the laser pistol. Oh god, the death claw is still coming. Help me. Ah! Where's my flare gun? Oh right, that was a different game. Phew, that was close, but close or not, I still didn't die, and that's more than what can be said about logical fallacy. <laughs> Hello there, my good man. One poison dart for you. First we toy him, then we buy him. First we tie him. Then we buy him. And that literally brings me up to literally level 5. I'm going to literally put points into snake, repair, and the rest into small guns. And for the pack, once again I'm literally going to go with intense training. There is a crouching tiger hidden death claw behind the closed door to the left. In order to avoid being taken by surprise and dying to it like logical fallacy did, I'm going to eliminate it right here and now. First I take it, then I bag it. There was literally nothing inside of the room with the crouching hidden death claw, aside for an average lock safe and a very hard locked door. I am curious what lies inside, but that will have to remain off limits for this playthrough. But this room here, however, contains a scoped 44 Magnum revolver, some ammunition, and a bottle cap mine on a workbench. This bottle cap mine will literally prove very handy indeed against the remaining death claw to come. First, I tag them, then, I deploy the bottle cap mine I just found which literally doesn't appear to do anything whatsoever. And then I bag them. And that's your lot. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I did not die even a single time in this entire challenge. Wink. And that proves that I am the greatest Fallout player that ever lived. I have now cleared out Old Oni, or at least the sewer portion of it.
The reward is this fat man here. A bunch of average lock safes I can't open. A missile launcher and a couple missiles. And of course this prototype medic power armor.